Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is going to be a quick video on some of my oldest boxing cards that I own. A uh, few of them is basically to give thanks to some of the YouTubers who gifted me a few of these cards. First, I'm going to start out with this Jack Kid Berg card. It's a GAI grade 8. As you can tell, it's super sharp and gorgeous. It's a gift that Liam and Joe Riley gave me at CollectorCon in Tampa. This is from the 1938 Knockout Razor set. There's 50 cards in this set, 30 of which are like drawn renditions, and 20 of them are like this one where it's a, a picture, a photography. So when it comes to Jack Kid Berg, I researched him and I found out he was born and raised in the mean streets of East London. He became the world light welterweight champion in 1930. His nickname was the Whitechapel Windmill. And he was one of the few Jewish superstars in the 30s. He started boxing at the age of 14. And he was notoriously known for being really good friends with the Jewish gangster in England uh, named Jack Comer. And he was also very famous for having an affair with Mae West, the actress. He had 192 fights. That's a ton of fights. 157 of them were victories, 26 losses, and 9 draws. In the U.S., when he came to the U.S., he fought 76 times out of that 192 fights. And his most noted fight was uh, for beating the Cuban boxer Kid Chocolate, who at the time was undefeated. And the person he beat for the championship belt was Mushy Callahan. So thank you guys for giving me this once again. I did my research and I hope you liked what you saw. Now check out a clip of Jack Kid Burt. A 15 round contest at the Albert Hall London for the lightweight championship of Great Britain. Misler, the holder, is slightly the taller. Berg, the challenger, has striped trunks. Cautious boxing starts the fight, with each of the Jewish antagonists taking the measure of the other. <laughs> Kidberg soon takes the offensive and surprises the champion with his two-handed attack. Well, I'm ever so pleased to get back to old London, and I want to thank you all for the people for the kind reception you've given me here today, and uh, I'll do my utmost in the future. I thank you. My next gift, which I showed recently, was of this 1910 Mecca uh, folder, not Mecca folder, but it's a T220. I'm used to saying Mecca double folders and such. These are the Champion, Athletes, and Price Fighter series. There's 50 cards in this series. And I tried to research some on this fight, but because it was in 1825, this fight, all I could see are things about this card when I would look things up. As you could tell, it's a bare knuckle fight that lasted. Man, when I tell you it lasted, it lasted uh, 34 hard rounds. Could you imagine fighting for 34 rounds? But what I find it weird was that this set was in 1910 and it was a bare knuckle fight, but they painted them with gloves. So was cancel culture in 1910 happening already? That's real funny to me. In this uh, set, just to get a little bit into it, it's 50 uh, card series. This one is of the Mecca, but they also have a rarer Tolstoy back. Here's another one. And um, it has famous uh, fighters like Jack Dempsey, John L. Sullivan. Um, and they're almost impossible to find in very high grades. This one was the one that Mark Rudog 21 gave me. That one was by Don. 
This one was of the fight between James J. Jeffries and Tom Sharkey. It was a championship fight. And this one was a fight where James Jeffrey beat him for the belt. And this was considered one of the biggest fights at the time. It was so big that they actually uh, decided to film it. And it was the first fight ever filmed, which was uh, big time. Like before, nothing like that ever happened. And the funny thing is, uh, the lights that were brought in to, so that the video could be seen were so hot and bright that it actually singed off the top of their hair as they were fighting. Their scalp and their hair was just singed off. So not only were they beating up on each other, they were getting beat up by the lights. That's totally amazing. Uh, I actually have a little footage on the fight. It's not the actual footage of what they filmed. This was actually a bootlegger who had like a video camera in his suitcase or so. And this is some of the footage that's caught. The official movies of the fight were lost, but this version of the fight was pirated from inside a cigar box. That's right, shot with a camera that was hidden inside a cigar box. The quality isn't too clear, but you can get an idea of the scene and the incredibly bright lights. A hat of a spectator will occasionally block out the foreground. Jeffries is the larger of the two in the slightly darker shorts. So in 1910, there was also Mecca produced this set, which is the T218. And Jack Johnson is one of the headliners in this set, as you could tell. They look very similar, but you could tell uh, the T220 are a little bit bigger. But uh, this, this one is very beautiful, this set. It has uh, a lot of fighters in it. The set is comprised of 153 cards, and um, it has Hassan, Mecca, and Tolstoy, which again is one of the rarer backs. Let me put this off to the side there. When it came to when it comes to Jack Johnson, he actually beat James Jeffrey in 1910 to win the belt, and Jack Johnson had a record of 72 and 11 with 11 draws. He was uh, basically one of the few superstars at the time that was considered a, a heavyweight boxer. He was also famous because at the time racism was at its height and he married a white woman. And the government didn't approve of this, so they looked for a reason to, I guess, bring him, tear him down from his fame. So they decided to arrest him on charges of the Man Act, which basically forbids you to transport women across state lines for moral purposes. Eventually, in 2018, Donald Trump pardoned Jack Johnson and all his uh, charges was forgiven. But basically, he spent the majority of the time throughout in the 1920s running from the police after he was charged for that crime and uh, found guilty. So he eventually did one year in jail, but he was famous for just being on the run for like, I think it was seven years. Uh, which was pretty crazy uh, when you come to think of it. But he was considered one of the biggest superstars of the time of uh, boxing and uh, of athletes in general. And now as for the oldest card, which I own, this is my John L. Sullivan Ogden's card from 1901. This is a very beautiful card. As you could tell, the condition is very beautiful. It has a little staining here. But aside from that, it's very clean and hardly has any chipping. I mean, it does when you look at the corners here. But for a card that has black borders, it's very good for a card that's 120 years old. <laughs> it's amazing that uh, it's well preserved like this, no creases. I consider myself fortunate to have found this one. He has an older one with the uh, Allen and Ginter set, which is really cool. But I have yet to find that card. Now, when it comes to John L. Sullivan, he was uh, nicknamed the Boston Strong Boy, and he was the first heavyweight champion of the glove boxing. From 1882 to 1892, he was the heavyweight champion. He was also, he transcended 
bare knuckle boxing. He was the last champ of bare knuckle boxing, and he was the first champ in glove boxing. He was the first boxing superstar. He was the highest paid athlete of the era, well, one of them, and his fights gave birth to sports journalism. His record was 42 with one loss and three draws. And when it comes to the set with the Ogden set, it's a British tobacco company which had five series. The, the one for this one is the series B, as you could tell in the back. The B has a little bit of a blemish there. But uh, there's five series in the set. They're, they're not considered crazy rare, but to find one in this condition, I, I basically consider myself fortunate, especially when it's really old. And one other thing I forgot to mention was this one has two, two types, one which is a matte and another one which is a glossy. The glossy are the rarer ones. I can't tell if this one's shiny, so I'm going to chalk this up for being the matte version. So... These are a few things I found out about these five cards, which are five of some of the older cards in my boxing collection. And I have to thank the YouTube community for giving me three of these five. Thank you so much, Liam, Joe, Don, and Mark. Um, so that'll be it for now with my boxing cards, some of the oldest cards I have. Um, I'm going to wish you all happy hunting when it comes to cards. I want everyone to stay safe and be blessed. I will see you on the next one.